And hi everyone. Today we're going to be trying to understand addiction as a relationship and using that metaphor to get a better, deeper understanding of what addiction is as well as how we treat addiction. So first off, addiction is a unique kind of relationship. What's happening is there's actually changes in your brain and this bond is forming between your brain and the compulsive behavior. Let's take a look at then how relationships might be similar to addiction as far as some of the major elements that go into both of them. And looking at the picture there, thinking about this caterpillar that is about to go through this major transformation because both relationships and the addictive process are very transformational for us. So first of all, we experience physical and emotional changes. And these are all characteristics, again, both of relationships as they're developing as well as addiction. So parts of the brain are actually changing, new neural pathways are developing. We're also experiencing all these kind of new emotions, uh, different neurotransmitters are flooding different parts of our brain. Both of these things involve significant commitment. One of my favorite sayings about relationships is that healthy partnerships aren't a 50-50 proposition, they're a 100-100 proposition. So it requires both parties, both people, to be all the way committed, to be 100% into it. We really see the same thing in addiction, is that it actually takes a lot of willpower and a lot of determination to continue on with the addictive process, even though there may be incredible consequences involved. We also see a lot of sacrifice being made, both to make the addiction continue and to make the relationship continue, as well as loyalty. So when you put all of these things together, you might not think when you first see all those words you're talking about addiction, but hopefully you can see how they actually are very similar in many ways. When we're evaluating our behaviors, our habits, our choices, we want to take a look at whether they are healthy choices, are they uplifting us, are they functional, or are they unhealthy, destructive, and dysfunctional. So this can certainly apply to relationships. We can have healthy and uplifting relationships, or we can have unhealthy and destructive relationships. We have a relationship with different drugs of abuse and different behaviors that might be healthy and might be functional, or can become unhealthy and dysfunctional. And it's important that each of us, I think, evaluates where we're at in our relationship with those things. And it's also a way of distinguishing between um, whether the behavior, whether the relationship, whether those choices are good for us or not good for us. Now let's talk about how in addiction, our brains are really hijacked and changed in ways that impact our decision-making and have enormous consequences on our behavior. So let's look for a minute at our brains and how addiction affects our brain. So you see the picture on the right there, and there's all these really cool areas of the brain. There's the limbic system there in the middle. There's the nucleus accumbens, which is associated with our re reward pathway, the VTA there, the ventral tagmental area. And you're not gonna remember all those terms and that's okay. Um, but what you can kind of simplify this as is to understand we have an old brain and we have a new brain. So if you look kind of in the middle of the picture, that limbic system, that reward pathway there, that's really our older, more primitive brain. That's really important to drive us towards survival type behaviors, um, creates urges um, to do certain behaviors like eating and reproducing that are important for survival. A lot of our real basic and raw emotions are found in this area of the brain as well. When it comes to addiction, we're going to call this the go system. So these are the drives. These are the things that our brain is telling us we should do more and more of. Toward the front of our brain in the prefrontal cortex, we have really that's our new brain, our more developed and evolved brain. This is where we have rational thoughts. We engage in a lot of long term planning. We weigh the pros and cons of our decision. So this part is really important as a way of slowing down that go system 
taking a look at something before we do it. So the go system is saying, yes, go for it. It's gonna feel good. It's gonna be enjoyable. I want more of that dopamine. While the stop system is saying, well, let's think about it for a minute before we do that. And it's creating some balance. Now, what happens in addiction is really twofold. So first of all, chronic drug use really impacts that old brain, that go system, creates an increased need for more and more and more dopamine. Just to feel normal, after a certain while, addiction doesn't even um, consist of enjoyable behaviors for the using person. It um, is almost necessary just to feel any kind of normalcy. So as that increases over time, that old brain or that go system is almost like having a brick on the gas pedal of a car where it's just constantly wanting to go, 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 and there's no slowing it down. At the same time, our prefrontal cortex, that new brain, the part that is supposed to be keeping some of those drives in check, is also inhibited and having a hard time limiting the uh, go system. So think of this as almost like a broken brake line on a car. So you have that gas pedal, that brick on the gas pedal from the old brain telling you to go, 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 while you have this broken brake line, um, so you're not able to stop or slow down. The result then is that the relationship really becomes a dysfunctional one. So addiction is a dysfunctional relationship. If you think back to the slide where we were comparing healthy versus unhealthy, uh, this relationship has now become unhealthy and dysfunctional. It's at a point where the user isn't even experiencing much pleasure. Their ability to choose is significantly impaired. So when people ask the question, why can't you just stop? Or why don't you realize that it's only going to create more problems? Addiction isn't a knowledge deficit. It's certainly not a willpower or morality deficit those kinds of labels really misunderstand the problem and they're also very stigmatizing. Um, so if you think about it as a uh, impaired brain, then it might give you a different context. So how do you get out of this process? How do you escape these uh, kind of unhealthy relationships? So first of all, ending any relationship, even if it's a dysfunctional one, is going to cause a lot of problems. It's going to cause chaos in your life. It's going to lead to a lot of increased stress because our brains are used to a certain amount of homeostasis and they're used to things being a certain way. Even if it's unhealthy, we kind of learn to function in the dysfunction. So when you start changing those things, it causes stress. It also leads to grief. So when a person ends a relationship, a person leaves their drug of choice and stops using, they do experience a, a very real grieving process that I think we need to be respectful of. So recovery is going to require significant life changes. It also takes time for the brain to repair itself. So just being clean for a few days or even a few weeks isn't enough to reverse all of the damage that's been done. So we need time for the brain to be able to fix itself and heal. Let's think about the treatment for addiction. And again, addiction we're thinking of as a relationship. So to me, the uh, simple answer to how do you treat a dysfunctional relationship is introduce healthy relationships. And those might come in the form of a sober peer support network, um, which 12-step groups and other self-help recovery groups are an excellent source. That might also come from supportive friends and family. If those friends and family are not using and they're supportive of the person's recovery, they understand addiction as a disease, um, they can also be a great source of healthy relationships. We often talk about having a sponsor, somebody who is also clean and sober, somebody who's working on their own recovery and can be a kind of positive role model. The counselor or helping professional can be another source of a helping relationship. Even though that may only be temporary, that may be a very important relation for somebody new in recovery to kind of establish trust and you can model what a healthy relationship looks like. And then we also have higher power. So 
spirituality is a really important foundational piece for many people in their recovery and I think we should encourage that as another healthy relationship. When you take all these things together you can develop a really strong network of new positive influences that become the foundation for a recovery process. I want to close out the presentation by sharing with you a short poem called Autobiography in Five Short Steps, which is by Portia Nelson. I think it's a really powerful way of capturing a lot of these concepts and thinking about the addiction and the recovery process. Step one, I walk down the street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I am lost. I am helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. Step two, I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I am in the same place, but it isn't my fault. It still takes a long time to get out. Step three, I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it is there. I still fall in. It's a habit. My eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. I get out immediately. Step four, I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Step five, I walk down another street. Thank you all for listening to this presentation. I hope it was helpful for you to try to understand addiction as a kind of dysfunctional relationship that requires us to develop new healthy relationships in order to begin the healing process.